Hey guys, stop what you're doing. Don't scan another vehicle, especially Toyotas, until you watch this. So a couple months ago, I came across a post about Snap-on scanners corrupting Toyota control modules. Now, the particular vehicles were 2009 and newer Toyotas that have the occupant classification system. And the particular instance that would happen is if you scanned all codes and then immediately cleared all codes, which most people do after they get done working on a vehicle, there was a chance that the occupant classification system module would brick. Apparently it would set a certain code in there that could not be cleared. It was a module failure code and you would have to replace the module and program it with a factory scan tool. One guy noticed it. He is a mobile tech. He went to a body shop. They said that the airbag light was off until they cleared codes and then the airbag light came on. It had a module failure. Since the vehicle was in an accident, they figured that the accident was the cause of it and it just didn't show up until after they were ready to finalize the vehicle and deliver it to the customer. The mobile tech had to replace the occupant module, program it, and it was good to go. And then the same tech noticed this happening again. And the, the person said the same thing, that the airbag light was off, they scanned it, they cleared all codes, and then the airbag light remained on. That tech then reached out to a couple of other techs he knew and asked them about it. And shortly after that, one of them responded saying that they had the same problem as well with a newer Toyota vehicle. He then contacted Snap-on and let them know what he was seeing. And they began researching the problem. Now this has been months ago. And apparently it is a bug in the 17.4 and the 18.2 software. Now the 18.2 software supposedly had a patch that came out uh, several months ago. I just received an email from Snap-on saying that there is a patch for 17.4 available. Now this doesn't mean that you are required to update your scan tool um, or pay the Snap-on guy. You can do it yourself. If you have a computer, you'll have to go on the internet and download the software. It is a free patch. You might even be able to get your Snap-on dealer to update your scan tool for you. This won't update you to the next level software. So if you have 17.4, it's not going to bump you up to 18.2 or 18.4. It is just a patch that fixes that particular problem. So the computer-based software is called ShopStream Connect. If you download that and install it, you have to go to the options in your scan tool, select Connect to PC. When you plug it into the computer, it will tell you if there's updates available. Now, unfortunately, my personal Modus, which is a Modus Edge running 18.2 software, I plugged it in a couple months ago. It said there was an update available. I ran it. I didn't even know that that's what it was for. My Zeus is running 18.4 software. It has a built-in software updater because it is running Windows version of its software. Um, so it downloads updates for me whenever they're available, but 18.4 already had that patch applied. This one here, we recently updated to 18.4, so it's already ready to go. This one here has 15.2, so this is old enough that it shouldn't apply to have that problem. The 17.4 and the 18.2 software supposedly was the only ones that had an issue. Um, according to Snap-on, I called tech support, asked them which ones. They said 18.2 and 17.4. The update just came out for 17.4 on December 5th. The update for 18.2 came out several months ago. So if you scan any vehicles in the Toyota family and they're a newer vehicle and you do a full code scan and clear all codes, if your shop has a scanner running 17.4 or 18.2 software, definitely stop doing that on Toyotas. Go in and manually clear codes one module at a time until you check to make sure that you have that patch installed because it is gonna cost you a couple thousand dollars to replace that module and have it programmed if you clear all codes and it bricks it. Now I will attempt, I'm going to try hook my older scanner up because I have not hooked this scanner up to the computer in a long time to see if it'll let me update it so I can walk you guys through the process. Either way I'll show you what steps I'm going to take and if there's no update um, you'll get most of the idea. If there is an update we can go through the entire process. So I'm going to go over to my computer and we will plug this scanner in. 
Now, I already have the software installed. If you don't have it, just Google Shop Stream Connect. It should take you to Snap-on's website where you can download it. Since I already have it installed, I'm gonna to go to the scanner, and you can see in the bottom corner here what software version I'm running. This is 15.2. Both of my modises also show it in this corner. The Zeus shows it over here. So if you're running the Zeus or the Virus, look over here. If you're running 17.4 or 18.2, then go ahead and check for this patch. On here, we're gonna to go to Tools and connect to PC. Now I can plug the cable in. This is just a USB cable to, I believe, a USB Mini B. I'm not sure, it's the older style Mini. Mini cable, it'll plug in into the top. And now I can hit continue on the scan tool. It tells me on the screen, this device is now in connect to PC mode. My computer ran some driver updates. Now this will pop up almost every time. I always hit continue without scanning because the next time you plug it in, it's gonna say that the drive is damaged and wanna fix it as well. Now, since I have ShopStream Connect installed, it opened automatically. And this is how you can access your fault codes and stored data as well. So if you saved codes from a vehicle and are wondering how to print those out, you can just click here. It'll pull up that file. And you could print this out for the customer. So right here, this message popped up right for me saying that there's an update. Now you can bypass this if you want, if you just need to get the codes for your customer, but if you need to install the patch, go ahead and click download. Now this does require internet connection. So we're gonna download this, it'll take a few minutes, and then we'll apply this update to the scan tool. While that's downloading, we need to make sure that the scanner's plugged into a power supply. So all of these scanners come with a power supply from the factory, it may still be in the box, because normally you have it plugged into the vehicle and it powers itself. If not, you need to connect the jumper leads that you have with your like OBD1 cable into this vehicle, hook it up to a battery, something to give this scanner constant power during the update. Now during the download process, it's not a big deal, but since we have to wait for that, we may as well find the cable now. So if you still have your original box, this was inside of my snap-on case. This is the 12 volt power supply that plugs into a AC plug-in. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into the scanner now while that download is continuing. I'm about 50% done with the download. So here in a few minutes, we can apply that update to the scanner. So I have that cable plugged into the top. It shows over here that I am plugged into a power supply. Download completed successfully. To install this update, click install. So I'm gonna hit install. I have the power supply plugged in. Ready to program the device. Warning, connect the device to an external power source. Do not disconnect device until software installation complete. May take up to 10 minutes. It says 100% complete and it says done, but normally another message will pop up, so we'll just have to wait for that. Okay, please disconnect your device and reboot to finish the update. So I'm gonna unplug the USB cable. We are going to restart it. So it was moving the software up to this and on the reboot, it installs that software into the scan tool. This will take a few minutes as well. Then it'll normally restart and then you might have to hit the yes button a few times. It'll restart a couple of times during this process. But make sure that the power remains connected. Um, otherwise you might ruin the unit and you'll have to send it in. Okay, the software update is complete. Press check mark to restart. The check mark is the yes button. So 
So it verified that the update was complete. Hit yes again. And there we go. It's still version 15.2 on this scanner. Um, this is an older one. I used it because I was hoping that it had an update available. So I showed you guys how to update one scan tool. Hopefully that helps you through the process of checking your scan tools to make sure they have the current update. If you have friends that are in the automotive industry, share this video to them or let them know that there is a patch available for 17.4 and 18.2 snap-on scanner software that will prevent damage to Toyota vehicles. If you don't have the patch, it could cost you thousands of dollars. I don't know if Snap-on is reimbursing for those software failures or not. More than likely, it's gonna be on you if that has happened to you in the past. But to prevent it, spread the word, get these scan tools updated. Your Snap-on reps may not even know about the update or the patch. If you see your Snap-on guy, you can ask him about it, see if he can apply the patch for you. Otherwise, download the ShopStream Connect and do it yourself. It's up to you if you want to try it that way or have your Snap-on dealer do it. Hopefully your Snap-on dealer can apply the update without charging you to go to the current level software. If you're thinking about going to the current level software, it might be time to do it now. Um, right now they're not doing the buy one get one free. That won't be until early part of next year. But at least if you get it done now, you will get some additional benefits like the Altus Cloud on all of the platforms except for the Zeus and Virus that will allow you to automatically update the code scan to the cloud and you can access it from any computer. Otherwise, currently you have to plug it into the computer with ShopStream Connect to print those codes out for your customer. So if you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. I'm not affiliated with Snap-on. I'm not a Snap-on dealer. I'm just a mechanic that doesn't want anyone else out there to have issues with a Toyota vehicle and cost the shop money. Because although it may not cost you money, it's gonna cost the shop money or you might get blamed for it if the module fails under your watch. So, check your scanner, spread the news, talk to your boss, see if you can get some updates. Do whatever you can to protect yourself from bricking a module. Like I said, questions, comments down below. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.